Uh, yeah, this uh, welcome uh, everyone. Uh, this afternoon I will uh, talk about uh, the uh, ongoing research actually, and this was uh, part of the uh, master thesis of our student uh, Rakens. Uh, I will mainly talk about that, in, and in the second, uh, well, maybe a few minutes, I will also reserve all uh, uh, developments on the same uh, transition model we just discussed also in the break. Uh, so we we're maybe uh, putting the effort on the same uh, development. And this talk, uh, yeah, mainly focusing on uh, April South noise using uh, the uh, detached delay every simulation and the Fox William Hockey acoustic analogy. Uh, I will first give uh, some you know highlights about the methodology and uh, considering the time I'm not going to go into too deep much details and show some validation of individual uh, frameworks to TDS and FWH and some application of this combined um, on a um, uh, test case and cooked up test case and, and I will show you the next step so this, we are still uh, um, working on it because this, uh, this method uh, on the real test case we haven't validated although we validated the individual uh, components. Uh, and again, yeah, I will talk about this ongoing development on transition modeling. Uh, the details of this uh, talk is in the masterpiece of uh, Parkland, uh, you can uh, find it. Uh, why we are interested? We are interested in, to, uh, in this uh, party of noise, mainly uh, for the wind energy application. You know, especially in the root region, we have uh, uh, massive uh, stall, high angle attacks, and there contributes uh, the, the stall noise, and we know that the stall noise is uh, a bit higher than the trailing edge noise. Uh, and the ambition was, uh, we know that LES is an expensive way uh, to do this, maybe the natural choice uh, mainly, but um, the ambition was initially uh, to see if we can um, apply uh, the DDS uh, for the trailing edge noise mechanism. So far, it seems that it's a bit uh, difficult because uh, we know that the, the main uh, noise contribution in mechanism is uh, going on on the surface, on the in the boundary layer. Uh, when we talk about uh, trailing edge, and then you need really uh, accurate uh, resolution, then uh, probably you need that yes. But when you have a massive separation, so uh, the real noise contributing mechanism is happening away from the surface, uh, that is uh, suitable for DDS, and uh, we saw that. Also, uh, we considered an, uh, a test case that is defined by uh, Airpostak uh, BSI uh, project, and uh, that is a high angle of attack framework, uh, so 60 degree uh, angle of attack. It's a deep stall, and there were uh, experimental uh, uh, data for that, and the mesh is also provided. So, what we did uh, first validated the CFP TDS uh, and also. Uh, Validated the folks with them helping on similar test cases, then finally merged these two and applied. And the ongoing uh, research is, uh, is trying to do the same in a mild uh, separated uh, case. I'll explain a little bit uh, soon. Uh, before diving in, uh, so we know that we can do it in two ways actually uh, to determine the particle noise. One is the, uh, what we call uh, direct method. So you just uh, have a very large domain, like considering this, this whole domain uh, for your safety, and then uh, find the, uh, the noise in the far field. The, the drawback is you need a, a somewhat reasonable uh, resolution in your mesh, and then it becomes uh, very quickly, very expensive to uh, resolve the, the far field noise. But we did test it in SU2 uh, on a simpler problem uh, with success. And uh, the, uh, the more common way to do it is uh, actually to solve uh, your flow field around the object and then uh, define an acoustic volume uh, around that uh, uh, object uh, and uh, assume that acoustic volume is compact and uh, find the far field noise uh, using the analogy. So, and we, we did actually mainly we are focusing on the, the second step. Uh, first, I want to uh, give a bit of details about the uh, DDS. Uh, what you see on the right uh, upper corner is uh, the, the experimental data that is given on this, uh, this project uh, page, this type of uh, page. Uh, some difficulties there because you need some initial transient uh, time uh, to be able to record uh, your lift and drag uh, data because it's uh, yeah, quite uh, unsteady and uh, quite uh, 3D. Uh, 
in nature 3D flow, 60 degrees. Uh, and the span size also matters if you want to uh, compute it uh, correctly. So in the experiments, they use a span size of 7.2 vortex. And also during the experiments, they had to wait for uh, some initial uh, time uh, to start uh, recording uh, some, some correct uh, lip data and drag data. And this, uh, th this time is usually measured with uh, convex time units, uh, non-dimensional time. And uh, 4800 is, uh, is quite a bit uh, time for, for CAP. Um, yeah, here you just saw uh, actually the separation. Uh, I'll get uh, into it. And we also, uh, the, the website also provides uh, mesh. Uh, some details, I'm not going into it, um, but you can uh, read it later. The main thing is you can't apply um, DDS directly, but you have to do the in steps. First, do the first order solution, uh, steady state, get the second order solution, steady state, and use that second order solution to initiate the DDS. So that was uh, uh, the tip actually uh, in our discussions with, uh, with Beckett. And then Francesco Aldo. Um, uh, I want to show only the highlights here, not going to really details, because this uh, study also performed by uh, Molina uh, earlier. Uh, what we did a bit uh, differently is that uh, we also use uh, Delta SLA uh, up with uh, scale length, uh, length scale. And we saw that uh, using this Delta SLA, uh, you get uh, also the, uh, lower. Uh, non-dimensional uh, energy viscosity, and you can uh, have a higher resolution in your flow flow. So you can see here uh, the shedding uh, better. So that was uh, a stick to Delta SLA. And here you see actually the three-dimensionality three of the flow. So it's a uniform inflow, but because of the high angle of attack, you see that the flow is really three-dimensional. What you see here is we are looking uh, from the front side of the airfoil, and you are looking at X, uh, different X over C uh, locations. So uh, in the front side, uh, mid side, and the back side of the uh, of the airfoil, and uh, and the solution is really uh, 3D. If you look at the, the span um, span wise uh, distribution. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, to relate uh, uh, the vortex shedding with the time variation of the sectional lift. So each of these A, B, C, D locations are, are plotted here. So we can uh, yeah, clearly see that when there is a large vortex shedding, uh, the, the lift uh, drops as expected, and we can see it. And then uh, vortex forms again and uh, stay on the uh, airfoil, yeah, go back. And we can also see this alternating uh, leading edge, trailing edge uh, vortex shedding uh, clearly as well. That is. This is almost a blunt body, and that is also a kind of expected solution from there. Um, we looked at uh, the effect of the span size. Uh, did also uh, span of one chord length and span five chord length uh, simulations. And what happens if we have a, a smaller span? Because the uh, experiments, as I mentioned earlier, performed on a seven chord length span and a larger one. If you have a shorter uh, span, then the vortex, the shell vortex, stays uh, closer to the surface in the uh, numerical solution. And that uh, uh, leads actually higher lift. Uh, yeah. And you can, that, that means a stronger vortex effect on the, on the surface. So you can see that the blue uh, peaks here, that's uh, corresponding to one chord length. Uh, if you can see the, the black ones are the seven, and the red ones, most of the black ones now, the, uh, the experiment, uh, with the five chord length. In span, uh, we looked at also PST uh, of this uh, this lift uh, variation in time, and uh, the good thing is we can uh, get uh, the, the, uh, the shedding frequency, and we can match the total uh, number uh, more or less. And there is the second peak in the, uh, the first harmonic, but which uh, we can also detect. Again, you see the clear difference if you use the the one chord or or five chord on a span. Uh, same thing uh, holds for uh, for pressure uh, corruption. So uh, using larger span, you get a better approximation. And this overall concludes uh, that uh, we are uh, okay with our DDS uh, simulation. So we can catch uh, the experimental data, and we were confident uh, with the parameters and settings in the 2 uh, so we could uh, use this approach. 
Uh, then we switch to uh, Volkswagen mounting and uh, analogy. The first thing we tested was a simple uh, test case, uh, 2D cylinder. And we know that 2D cylinder, uh, 2D case is not uh, suitable for the FWH analogy. And uh, that uh, um, depicts itself in this, uh, this solution. What you see black is the DNS, uh, and the, the, the aesthetics here is uh, dependent on the ABS. And these blue uh, circles are are the uh, FWH solution. So we do the uh, classical CFT simulation and then uh, use FWH for the far fields. Uh, but this is mainly due to uh, that it's a 2D problem and the FWH doesn't work there. So what we tried as well, because it's, it's a rather simple problem, we tried the uh, direct table. So at, uh, I think it's a 100D uh, domain and calculated directly the, the noise in the far fields. And we ended up in this, uh, this blue uh, tri uh, triangle uh, solution, which is very close to LES and uh, DES. So that was kind of uh, uh, proof that uh, with SU2, you can actually do the direct uh, solution. Uh, then we switched to um, uh, quasi-3D. Uh, what you do is actually you solve a 2D uh, problem and then you repeat the same problem in the uh, And for that one, we get uh, 10D and 26D span lengths and compare the uh, overall sound pressure level, which also says something about the, uh, the, uh, the power uh, in, your, uh, in your noise. And this is a quite a good match. And also uh, looked at the SPL, so we could catch uh, the peaks uh, quite well. And this uh, more or less concluded that uh, we have uh, not too bad uh, FWH implementation. Uh, here, uh, I also, uh, yeah, we also looked at the diagram, so we uh, say that. And uh, the uh, shedding frequency, we, we have a quite good match also in the first time. Uh, the match is uh, not that bad, also in the diagram. Then the natural uh, uh, follow up was combining these two. Uh, so the DDS solution for the NACA 21 and uh, calculating the FWH uh, uh, with FWH to far field noise. But there is no analytic solution uh, or experimental data. Uh, to compare that. So this is kind of um, yeah, our feelings, how we can, uh, uh, what we get uh, from that. Uh, again, we uh, use the code of uh, Eduardo, uh, Eduardo and then um, uh, modified it quite a bit uh, to adapt it to this uh, situation. I'll show you, uh, I think I'm out of time almost, uh, some results uh, without any comparison again, but we see uh, clearly this uh, low frequency noise and uh, two uh, peaks for the uh, for the shedding frequency and first harmonics and look at the uh, directivity and we see that uh, the, we see this uh, the low frequencies and uh, compact uh, uh, behavior of the, uh, the source so for the low uh, helmets number and uh, for the high frequencies that it becomes a non-compact uh, diaper source and because we couldn't validate that, now we are uh, in uh, trying to do another uh, uh, measurement with 6308 uh, at the uh, acoustic uh, uh, wind tunnel of wind tunnel, uh, sorry, wind tunnel of uh, Twente. Um, but there uh, we have the problem that in the tunnel we cannot uh, really measure uh, the lower frequencies, but we will probably compare the surface pressure. Uh, and the numerical study is also ongoing, and hopefully we will present it uh, in January inside there. Um, I need uh, just a few minutes. Uh, well, this was uh, the, the research about uh, the acoustic analogy, and I want to give a bit of uh, highlight about the uh, ongoing efforts in, in transition model. Uh, yeah, we discussed uh, just now that uh, three different uh, people were trying to do the, uh, the LM transition model at the same time, but uh, yeah, luckily we didn't pursue uh, that far. So uh, what we did, uh, Edwin van der Weide started uh, this LM transition model in version six, but uh, then uh, SU2 switched to version seven. So he didn't, uh, uh, because the changes were too much. So he paused uh, that. What we did with the student uh, took it uh, from there and then uh, implemented it into version seven and also completed uh, the implementation. Uh, also got some preliminary results. Um, I don't know if uh, other things were uh, yeah, asking if these are better results. I don't know, we have to check it uh, afterwards. 
but it seems that uh, the results are uh, promising. So, and, and then we figured out there was also another user uh, doing the similar uh, implementation. It was uh, Suno Khan. And uh, we tried to contact and, and discuss with him, but it wasn't really uh, successful. But we, anyway, we uh, post this to also overcome this, uh, this thing, uh, double effort. And uh, now we are looking into uh, the possibility of uh, implementing the amplification factor transport equation. We just discussed that it's actually uh, quite difficult in CFP. Uh, there are a lot of complexities, but yeah, uh, out of curiosity, because we have a lot of uh, um, experience with the uh, export on uh, wind turbine applications and uh, yeah, further developed versions of export actually. And it's uh, quite good capturing this, uh, this transition. And now we are in the phase of just, uh, you know, looking into it and seeing if we can get far away uh, with this or not. So that's it. Thank you very much. And I'm, yeah, I have to. Uh, Transition, transition, model, transition, model. transition model. I hope there is some coordination. Yeah, I think we have to do them better. Uh, yeah, but we post that now because we know that uh, there are joint efforts, the same efforts. We don't want to pursue more. So, but this gave us uh, enough confidence that student can, uh, you know, know his way around in SU2. That was also kind of practice. Uh, yeah. Good. Questions from the audience? Second. Like Uh, two decades. Uh, uh, yeah. So, did you use the 3D code in 2D or in 3D? Uh, that, as far as I know, this code is uh, 3D code, and we try to use the 2D later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, that, that fails that we know, yeah. and that's why we then uh, uh, did a quasi 3D. So, then we uh, did the 2D solution. Repeated in uh, in the span, and just complete yeah, yeah. Uh, the same solution in the span. So there's no Yeah, but then we figured out, but this was also with the back of our mind uh, to try this direct method, just uh, do everything in SU2, and yeah, that was very, uh, in a way, worked out. Yeah. So maybe one more on my side. Take for the next stage, you need to show it to capture the the product. We need to increase the degree of especially on the because that measure that you, you, you were showing by the each one of the is designed for exactly uh, yeah but that was uh, good for quick validation so we didn't have to uh, uh, recreate the mesh but indeed uh, but, and, and there was nothing to compare the uh, the acoustic results so that's why we uh, stopped it there and probably we have to go back to the mesh uh, with uh, yeah, good point. Yeah, so we have now that we have the I think that would be great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, okay. Stop for the chairman. Do you want to make a yeah, the uh, uh, comment was about um, uh, the 2D acoustic solution in the time domain. Uh, yeah, we have the difficulty. There is no 2D solution, but in the frequency uh, domain, it's possible uh, to do that. And another comment was about the deep stall case that uh, the mesh that we got uh, obtained from the project uh, website is uh, mainly uh, aimed for the, uh, the uh, aerodynamic solution. But for the acoustic solution, we might uh, revisit that and get uh, a better, uh, fine resolution mesh. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thanks.
Any further comment or questions? No, no. I think we can close. Yeah. Thank you very much again.